This is Support is Sexy, episode 412, and we're continuing our series on money moves. Today's episode, Creating Your Buckets of Revenue. Welcome to Support is Sexy. I'm your host, Elaine Fluker, entrepreneur, author, and founder of Chic Rebellion Media. Five days a week, Monday through Friday, I bring you inspiring women entrepreneurs who share their wins and lessons to help you take your business to the next level. Here we go. Hi, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Support is Sexy. I'm super excited to have you here. You know, it just would not be the same without you. And I'm excited for the countdown to the Support is Sexy vision board party. If you're in Atlanta, Monday, February 19th, which is a holiday for most people in the U.S., I want you to come out and join me and other women in creating your vision board, creating your vision, mapping out what you want, what you really want, right? And also talking about the things that you need to let go. Actually, not even talking about it, getting clear on it, you writing it down, and us doing an exercise to let those things go. It's going to be a fun day, a productive day, a creative day, a day of vision. So Monday, February 19th in Atlanta, if you're here and you're interested, please go to supportissexyvision.com. Again, supportissexyvision.com. I can't wait to see you there. And I can't wait to talk about our topic for today. I feel like this is the center of it all, which makes sense on a Wednesday, right? The center of it all when we talk about money moves. Our subject today is creating your buckets of revenue. Yes, we're going to talk about money within money moves, but really about creating the opportunities for you to make money, not just how much you're going to make or even exactly how you're going to make it. It's more so creating the space so that these things become available to you, these things things being money because you're making money moves. So to get started, the first thing I want to make sure I touch on though is mindset. Mindset around money. It's so important. A lot of times as business owners, especially new entrepreneurs, we think about, well, actually, I don't know if it's a lot of times, but usually you would think the first thing you think about is, okay, how am I going to make money? How am I going to do this? Well, I think one of the first things for you to touch on is your mindset around money. Is it healthy? Do you have a healthy mindset around self-worth? Do you have a healthy mindset around your sense of value? Whether this is your side gig or your full-time business, you will never make money if you don't believe that you deserve money. You will never be able to negotiate if you don't believe you're worth it. You will never make, quote unquote, enough money if you don't feel as though there's more than enough money, resources and abundance out there that's just for you. This is a block a lot of us don't realize or maybe we don't want to admit that we have. There are many reasons for these blocks, programming from our childhood, even some from our adulthood, social norms that are imposed on us as women, especially about playing nice and not pushing for what we really want or even disbelievers in our own circles, people that we love, people that we don't know, people who criticize us for having these dreams. They've either told us or implied things about our dreams and so on. The list goes on and on for the reasons that we might have some of these blocks. That said, you got to get over it. You have to figure out a way to get over it. Otherwise, this block will always be there. In a previous episode, very recently, you know, I talked about letting go of the resistance of being in Atlanta after moving from New York. Well, once I let go of that, more started to flow in money, opportunities, connections, all of those things. And I believe because I had such a block around it, these things weren't opening up for me. But once I open that door, things begin to flow in. And the other things that I did need begin to flow out. That's part of it too, right? So again, you have to get over these blocks. Otherwise, you will remain stuck. You will not make money moves. You will just be stuck. Now, as it relates to money, I speak about this because I have experienced this personally. In fact, this is something that I continue to work through. So not even just about resistance, but about money, self-worth, value, making sure that I'm asking for what I really want and pushing when needed to get what I really want. And the way I have chosen to do this is with my coach. You know, I recently got a business coach, Margot, who I absolutely love working with her. She's fantastic because she's someone who pushes me, supports me, and advises me based on her experiences. 
Now, if you do not have this person or persons in your life right now, and you feel like there are some restraints in your life around your ability to make money, find these people, mentors, coaches, whatever you need. It is urgent. Otherwise, you will remain stuck. And I'm very passionate about this, especially for us as women. Again, we create these fantastic businesses and ideas, and we can't figure out a lot of times why we can't make money. Sometimes we think it's the business, and sometimes it is. Maybe there's some tweaks that need to be done there. I've had to do that as well. But sometimes it's all about, it's an inside job too, right? That's the thing. It's an inside job too. Sometimes it's about our hangups around money or asking for what we want. All right, so I want you to think about that. Honestly, it's very serious. Think about it, but it is something that you can make a decision to change, especially with support. Now, that said, let's talk about your buckets. And this is a term I actually first heard from Arielle Lauren, who is the creator of the Arielle Lauren Agency. She mentioned this when she appeared on episode 311 of the Support is Sexy podcast. So make sure you go back and listen to that. Ariel talked about setting up, quote unquote, buckets to collect revenue for your business. Simple, right? It's simple. But when she said it, it totally made sense. It was visual for me. I totally got it. And I changed some things actually in my own presentation of my business as far as on the web and other places where people could know how to provide me revenue for my buckets and know what my buckets were. That's really what it is. So I started thinking about my business this way and it was the beginning of a big shift for me. So that's what we're going to talk about today, your buckets and creating your buckets of revenue. So for you, what might those buckets look like in your business? Is it a service? Is it a product? Is it a package? What are you selling? And if I want to buy it as a customer, how do I do that? You'd be surprised how often we forget to make a way for people to pay us. Someone says, okay, that's great. I want to buy that. You don't have anything set up to help you do that. And today there are so many tools, and I'm going to talk about some of them, that are accessible to us for people to be able to pay us. I mean, we can have friends pay us back via PayPal or anything like that, right? Venmo, all these other tools that we can use to pay each other easily. So there are certainly tools for your business. So here are a few examples of how you can create your buckets. Say you offer coaching or consulting services to people. When I go to your website, will I know the ways that I can hire you for services? Is there a way for me to do that? Is your website currently just informational and tells me about you? Okay, that's great if it tells me how fabulous you are, but does it also make it easy for me to pay you? Do you tell me in a clear, concise way what your services are. Is there a clear way for me to get in touch with you? Sometimes I've looked at websites. I don't even know how to get in touch with this person. I'm on social media. I'm all over the place. And as a customer, if I would really try to buy something, I'm moving on to something else. So you want to check in and look at that as well. I did a great interview recently that you'll hear a little bit later from branding expert Des Dobreva. And she made an incredible point about branding that I think also applies here. She said, if your customer is confused, she won't buy from you. If your customer is confused, she won't buy from you. So when it comes to your service, what is it and how do I get it? Tell me, put it on your website, make it simple. Because just as I mentioned earlier, if I'm confused, I'm not, I can't, even if I wanted to buy from you, but I'm not going to buy from you if I'm confused. So another example, are you someone who people always ask to quote unquote, pick your brain? You know, that's a phrase everybody uses. I'd love to get together for coffee and pick your brain, pick your brain, pick your brain for $6 over coffee. I like expensive coffee, right? Expensive tea, but pick your brain. Uh, How about you create a bucket where you charge for that expertise that you're sharing? Now I'm not talking about mentors or anything like that. I'm talking about other business people who want to quote unquote, pick your brain. Well, Again, how about you create a bucket where you charge for that expertise and you can do so by offering them the opportunity for a paid consultation right on your website. You have a description of the service and a link to where they can go to book time. So you have your calendar there and also pay for that time in advance. Some people don't think about this, but this is a great opportunity, especially if you have a certain expertise to offer your customer, your audience, anyone wanting to get in touch with you, an opportunity to have a conversation with you about whatever that expertise is and to pay for those services. 
Now, a great tool to use for this is Acuity Scheduling. I'm a big fan of Acuity Scheduling. Their customer service is amazing. I've been using it as a booking service or booking option for the Support a Sexy podcast and now other businesses that I've set up. They are amazing. But the great thing is you can use Acuity to set up that calendar that I mentioned and then let people pay you directly through them and you collect payment for these appointments. So the consultation or any other services that you have, people go in there, into their information, pick the time they want, and they can pay you right there for that consultation. So it's possible and it's easy. Now, there are other calendars and things out there, of course, great choices, but I use Acuity. It's the one that I prefer. And I have a special offer actually for you if you do want to try this. So no excuses. You can try this and get 45 days for free, a special offer from Acuity for Support of Sexy listeners. Go to acuityscheduling.com forward slash sexy. So that's A-C-U-I-T-Y scheduling.com forward slash sexy. I'll make sure I have a link to this in the show notes so that you can go there. But this is an opportunity for you to create this bucket. Get started here, right? We're going to take a step every day after each episode. This could be your first step in setting up an opportunity for people to pay. Now, if you have any fear around this, First, go back to the beginning. Like we said, there might be some self-worth issues or some fear around money. That said, if you are nervous, though, that people might not buy from me if they see that I'm charging for this, that's fine. If they don't buy from you, they don't buy from you. But if I want to buy from you and I'm a customer on your website, you want to make it easy for me, right? So think about it that way. Yes, there are going to be people who don't buy. I don't think there'll be people who are mad, but sometimes we worry about that, too. Whatever. Those aren't your people, right? I remember expressing a fear like that when I was in a mastermind years ago and I said, I don't know, what if people don't like fill in the blank? And this person in the group said to me, well, those aren't your people. Duh, there you go. Those aren't your people, people who get upset because you're charging for something that is your expertise or whatever it is, something of value that you want to offer. I always say it's an offering, something that you want to offer to people and offer them the opportunity to pay for your services. People who get upset about you doing that or people who don't want to buy, Those aren't your people. Focus on the folks who want to buy, who want to work with you. Now, if you sell a product, your bucket is much more straightforward, right? You can sell it directly on your website or on places like Amazon. Or you can set up a funnel that allows you to form a relationship with your customer by offering her something first before she buys, which is something that I love. Create a funnel, you offer something first, and then she can buy. Now, funnel is something that I just learned about when I created my business over the past few years. So if you haven't heard of that, don't worry about it. Basically, it's making an offer to people to get them into your quote unquote funnel, which means you create something of value. You offer it to your client, customer or audience. They give you usually their email so that they can receive this offering. Then they're added to your email list. So this funnel leads to your email list. And then you can follow up with them with information, whether that's adding them to your newsletter to tell them more about what what you're doing and to tell them about potential offers that lead to your buckets. So think about a literal funnel, right? Open at the top, comes in, gets smaller and leads into a container, your bucket. So setting up a funnel, think about something that you could offer to people, a PDF, an audio recording. There's a lot of different things that you can offer, some kind of model of how to do something, a cheat sheet that leads people to give you their email if they think it's something of value and you want to make sure it's of value, right? They give you their email, you follow up with them with information and potential offers, and that leads into your funnel. Another great thing about funnels is you can create an upsell. So what that means is you sell a product to your customer, then you offer them something additional, whether that's a bonus service or if they buy more at one time, they might get some kind of discount. You make it an opportunity for them to get even more value basically for their money. They can decide to get it or they can decide not to. But again, you offer this to them. And most people, if it's a value, I know I always do this. I usually go for it if it makes sense for me, especially if it's something I'm going to use again and again. Now, my choice for tools for upsells is ClickFunnels.com. You can set up landing pages. It makes upsells easy. It makes downsells easy. So you can upsell and then downsell. It makes special offers super easy. 
my experience with the company has been amazing. Now, again, I'm sure there's other options out there, but this is what I use. And I want to make sure to share tools with you. So when you're hearing these tips and ideas, there are as few barriers as possible for you to create these buckets. So ClickFunnels is the one that I love for setting up your funnel. And again, I'll have a link in the show notes for this, but I set up a bit.ly link so that it's easy for you to go to what is our affiliate link, which costs you nothing, but it'll be great to refer you to ClickFunnels so you can get a 14 day free trial with the service bit.ly slash click funnels sis so click funnels support is sexy so with all of these tools i'm sharing you get a free trial try them out if it doesn't work out for you you can move on but i'm going to have that link for click funnels i'm going to have that link for acuity you can try them out for no cost to you 14 days with click funnels 45 days with acuity and again i'll have links to these in the show notes so wherever you're listening go to the full description and you'll see them there now another bucket idea create packages. When I first began offering writing services for people, I would say a few hundred dollars for her bio or a few hundred dollars for website review or all these different services that I was doing as one-off services. And that could be okay in the beginning when you're still dabbling and figuring things out, right? But my business changed when I began to package my services. And this is advice that I got when I was in that mastermind that I mentioned, led by Rachel Tenenbaum, who was actually episode 80 of the Support a Sexy podcast. So make sure you go back and listen to that. But packaging things was really helpful for me and I believe for my customer. So for example, I offer services to customers and individuals that are about creating their brand stories. Depending on what someone needed, I would offer services here and there before I knew how to create packages. But once I started creating packages that offer several services for a price, I started to get even more business because people could see what they get. They could see it compared to other packages and they knew exactly what they were investing in instead of how much is this? How much is that? How much is this? Which is, again, okay if you want to do an a la carte menu, but I think packages are a great way to set up one of your buckets. But now for me, I have packages that offer several services to people around creating your brand story, starting at $1,999. And then they go up from there. But people can see what they get in the package. They can see compared to the other ones, as I mentioned, and then they can make a decision. It's not one here and there or me trying to figure out prices for one here and there, them trying to figure out prices for one here and there. I did use feedback from customers and based on requests for what people would find most useful. And then I continued to tweak until it felt good for me and until people begin to take a look and buy. So I suggest that for you. Don't feel like you're tied into this package once you create it. Of course, if someone buys it as is what you have there, you give them what you said you would give them. But then you can continue to tweak it and create it for future customers, which is one of the great things about ClickFunnels. You can update that anytime. You don't have to go to a designer and go through all this process to update your website. So that's my ClickFunnels push, right? But I use these packages to create buckets. That's the important thing. I created buckets with these packages. And you can see an example of this for you to model if it makes sense for you and for your business at createyourbrandstory.com. Sending you there, not even so you can buy something unless you think it's something that you need, but really so you can see what I'm talking about. Sometimes seeing it, actually most of the time, right? Seeing it in front of us makes a lot more sense. So createyourbrandstory.com. Again, I'll have a link to this in the show notes, but go there and see what I'm talking about so you can think of your business in that way or your offerings, I should say, in that way as a possibility. How can I package what I offer in these different ways to create these different tiers of buckets for people? Now, also one important thing to note about this, I no longer break up these packages because then I am trying to figure out how much each thing is as opposed to the overall value. That makes sense? So sometimes people would look at my packages and then they would contact me and say, well, I only want this and this and this from the package, whichever one they choose. How much is that? Well, it doesn't work like that. For me, with those packages, it's an all or nothing thing. So you might as well get all of these other services because this is what you have to pay for it. And the reason I started doing that, because again, when you're trying to pull things out here and there, at least in my experience, when you're trying to pull things out of your package here and there, then you're trying to create uh, prices for those individual things. And you never really do yourself justice when you do that. Again, in my experience. So I prefer the packages People can buy the package and then they'll get all of those services or if they don't need it, they don't need it. They can find it elsewhere. 
might sound tough to do, might sound tough to turn that away, but it makes much more sense, much more value, a much better use of your time, of what you're creating, what you're offering, and the person knows what they're receiving. Now, that said, you can create customized packages for your clients. So say you have your own packages as a guide, as I mentioned, createyourbrandstory.com. But if you're working for a client who might have specific needs, you can come up with a package or a bucket, as we're calling it, for them based on what the two of you discussed. So I'm not saying break up your package. Like I just said, I don't recommend doing that. But you might be working with a client who does say, well, this is what we need right now. And if you really want to work with them, you can then create a customized package for them. Does that make sense? So if you go to a client in whatever industry you're in, you have a conversation, they tell you what they need. Maybe it's along the lines of what you already offer. So you could say, well, I have these packages. Or again, if they have some specialized need, Create a package for them, make sure you charge accordingly, and offer that to them. Here's a tip, though. Always make sure you follow up any discussions for a customized package with a bulleted outline of your deliverables, the fee, and when it's to be paid. Again, always have an outline for a customized package that follow-ups your discussion with a bulleted outline of your deliverables based on what you discussed, the fee, and when it is to be paid. Because if you're creating something customized, you've had some discussion, you want both of you to be able to see it on paper, and I have people sign off on it as well, and I sign off, just so there's no misunderstanding, right? Back to what we said earlier, be clear and not confusing. Another idea for your buckets, and this is something that I began to focus on in my business most recently, Create repeat revenue opportunities. So this could be something like a subscription service, something that people pay monthly or however often in order to have access to it. Maybe it's a group or a certain kind of content or something else that will support them on a regular basis. Now, it doesn't have to be super expensive, although some opportunities like this are, but it is consistent. So you decide the price, but make sure that the content is consistent. I've created this as part of my business through supportasexymastermind.com, which is a group that provides ongoing support to women entrepreneurs by connecting them to a global community of women, providing you with tools and resources to support you in your business, giving you access to mentoring, and giving you exclusive content such as workshops with women entrepreneurs that are only available to the group. So that's one way that I'm doing it. There are a lot of other ways, again, to set up your group. Maybe it's a call that you do every week. A lot of ways for you to bring your people together, offer them opportunity for, as we mentioned, content or any other kind of quote unquote exclusives that they can get for being a member of your community through this subscription service. Another bucket that I set up like this is girlonpodcast.com, which I just formed earlier this year. It's a podcast booking service for women where we help our clients who are brilliant women entrepreneurs like you to appear on the top podcast hosted or co-hosted by other women. So our clients pay a monthly fee for this service. So that's an ongoing bucket. Now, here's a caveat. Of course, you want to make sure that any buckets you set up that offer repeating service or that are subscription types of services offer the ultimate value to your customers, your customer, your client, your audience, whoever it is, you have to have consistent value for them. And you want to do your very best to consistently provide the best product, service or opportunity that you can. Otherwise, your buckets will remain empty and we do not want that, right? So you want to make sure that you're delivering on your end of the deal so people feel like it's worth it for them to keep investing in it. Think about Netflix, for example. You invest in that every month because you continue to get new content. There's a big catalog there. There's things for you to explore. If all of a sudden that value went away, there wasn't anything new, which sometimes I feel like they're slipping. It's nothing new for me, at least. But if there isn't anything new, you think, okay, well, this isn't worth it anymore. So make sure you set it up in a way that you can be consistent and deliver consistently to your customer. But setting up repeat revenue, that's a great bucket. All right, so let's talk about pricing for a little bit. When it comes to pricing, of course, there's no way for me to tell you what to charge because you all have different fabulous businesses, but I have no idea what industry that you're in. So I can't really tell you charge this, charge that. But I will say this, increase your pricing for real. Raise your prices. Most entrepreneurs, especially in the early stage, undercharge. And for women, 
for the reasons that we spoke about earlier, it's even more of a hurdle. So even though I can't tell you what to charge because I don't know where you are, what exactly you're doing, I can tell you to raise your prices. Think about the last amount that you charge someone for products or services. Did you feel really good about it? Do you feel like it was an even exchange of energy, which is really what I see it as? Did you feel like you were getting what you deserved as far as value? Did you feel like you offered the value that you promised? Or is there something in you that feels like and knows that you should have charged more? If so, don't beat yourself up. Just count that last one as experience, right? And promise yourself moving forward that you're going to charge more. Now, we talked about the importance of getting clear about your self-worth and getting over those blocks, but here are some other reasons to raise your pricing. If you want to attract a certain kind of customer, you have to have prices that reflect that, and you have to be willing to stomach what may be uncomfortable moments when you have to let some clients go or be okay with the ones who turn you down or even question what you're charging. But think about this. Gucci does not run out the store after the customer who tries to talk them into why their bags shouldn't be this expensive. They focus on the customer who is ready to invest in their product. Now, you can choose to have another option that is at another price point for your customer, but don't keep cutting down your premium pricing. I believe this sends the wrong message to the universe. To me, you're saying, I am not worth this or I'm afraid more will not come along and the universe will reply in kind. So don't keep cutting down your premium prices, stick with it, and you can create other options for other customers if that's really what you want to do. You also want to move into a space where you're charging for value and results rather than hours and time spent. If you have a specialty, you're charging for that. And I always remember clients are paying for expertise, not hours, right? This is something important too, especially if you are or were a freelancer. So you might be used to charging for something by the hour. And if that's your business or your industry and that's how it works, great. Still raise your prices so that it makes sense for you and your business. But for the most part, I suggest that you make a shift from hourly to charging for value. Here's another reason to raise your prices. If you want to be able to reinvest in your business, you have to increase your margins. If you're just making it, you'll just cover the basics rather than being able to invest in your products or services or to get the support you need to grow your business. So that's another reason. You want to increase those margins so you have more money to work with. You also want to increase your prices because you want to be able to build your team, which is actually what we're going to talk about in tomorrow's episode. The importance of having a team, no matter what size, is crucial to your growth. And you want to have plenty of resources to reward your team for their hard work and to feel great every single time you pay them. You can't do that, though, when you have just enough. So raising your prices gives you enough to be able to reward your team, to feel great about it, to grow your team as you need to, and ultimately grow your business. So make sure that you come back tomorrow so we can talk about building your team, how you do that, ways that you can do that, what makes the best sense for you and your business. But I hope you enjoyed this episode today about creating your buckets. Let me know. Get in touch with me on social media at Elaine Fluker at Support is Sexy. Is this helpful for you? You know, I love doing these series, but it can't be just for me. It's my offering for you. So let me know if it's working for you. And don't forget to go to Support is Sexy Vision dot com so you can join me at the vision board party. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be fantastic. And you will walk away with your very own vision board. Support is Sexy Vision vision.com. All right. So as always, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. I'm excited about you and what you're up to and your business. But until next time, always remember you deserve support and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.